good evening. This is Dr. Adiola, um, a psychiatrist, a psychotherapist, a mental fitness coach, and the founder of Talk Mental Health. I welcome you to my live session today. So please tell me your name and where you're joining from. I live in the UK and I'm the founder of Talk Mental Health. So I could see some of you have joined. If you could be kind enough to let me know if you could hear me. Just tell me if you could hear me. I can see Oladi, I can see Jumo Bikemi, I can see Munin. Tell me your name and where you're joining from and also let me know if you can hear me. How are you doing? Today is the second to the last day of the month of um, February. How has your month been? Thank you so much, Destined. Uh, tell me your name and where you're joining from. Um, like I said, I'm Dr. Adiola. Thank you. I'm Dr. Adiola. I'm the founder of Talk Mental Health. Pamela from Ghana. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you're following me. Please, if you're fol not following me, kindly follow me um, so that you don't miss out on my amazing content. I am a psychiatrist, a mental fitness coach, and I help people become better persons by teaching them how to be intentional about their mental health. I basically teach people skills that would help them build their mental strength and resilience. I share my stories a lot to encourage people and also share stories of people that I've worked with to encourage you all. So don't miss out on my amazing content. Don't miss out on the offers that I have. If you're not following, hit the follow button and just ensure you follow me. Hi, Uju. Mercy from Nigeria. Thank you. Drop your name and where you're joining from. Let's wait for more people to join. Today is an important topic we are going to be discussing. And I want as many people as possible that would join today. If you could share this link to someone, your friends, your loved ones, let them join so that they are able to ask me questions directly. So you can ask your questions. Make sure you put your questions in the comment, not in the comments, in, in the question box. There's a question box on your right hand side. It has a question mark on it. Um, please put your questions there. Hi, Wangui from Kenya. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much everyone for joining. I'm so happy that I have a lot of you following me, a lot of you joining my live session. I'm so, so happy about it. I'm excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How has been your day, by the way? Um, how have you been? How is life treating you? Um, how is the economy treating you? Please tell me. <laughs> uh, this is one of the reasons why I come on live, just to let you know, um, to share with you tips that have helped me and tips that have helped my clients, and also to encourage you to hold on to hope and not give up yet. As a psychiatrist, I see a lot of clients in the hospital, sorry, patients in the hospital, and I know how challenging mental health issues could be. And I don't want people to break down mentally. I mean, yes, some people already have mental health disorders, so I don't want them to have relapses. If you have never had mental health problem before, I don't want you to break down. And that's why I do what I do, just to ensure that you're, I mean, just to teach you or show you how to be intentional about your mental health. Take proactive measures to protect yourself and your mental health. And that's why today we're going to be talking about self-care. Um... I've been Bola Case. Thank you for following me. So, some people just joined. Let me know your name and where you're joining from. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. We're going to start right away. Right away. Um, so the first thing I'm just going to ask, the first question I want to ask you all is what is self-care? Thank you so much, Rosemary. Thank you. What is self-care to you? What does self-care mean to you? What does that mean? When we hear the word self-care, today we're talking about self-care practices for busy lives. What does self-care mean to you? Can you please drop in the comment box? What does self-care mean to you? What does self-care mean to you?
what does i'm waiting i'm waiting for you please i need to know i want this to be as interactive as possible and that's why i'm asking what does self-care mean to you i'm waiting what does self-care mean to you What does self-care mean to you? What does self-care mean to you? Yep. Doing things that support my health, both physical and mental. Thank you, Wangui. Thank you so much. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Pardon me if I did not. Um, doing things that support my mental health, both physically and mental, mentally. Fantastic. Yes, I agree with you because self-care is a way, is a preventive measure that you could use to prevent mental health or even physical health problems. So if you are doing things that would protect your mental and physical health, then you're taking care of yourself basically. So T. Kelly says it means intentionally and unapologetically taking good care of yourself, mentally, body-wise, spiritually, and doing things that make you happy. Fantastic, I love that. So T. Kelly has explained that you are taking care of every part of your being your physical, your mental, and your spiritual being. Because humans are tripartite beings and we ought, we ought to take care of every aspect of ourselves. So yes, that's a very detailed answer. I love that, you, Kelly. Thank you. Um, Jumo Bikemi says, taking personal care of myself, all ramification and being intention in all ramifications and being intentional about it. Wow. Yes, I can see that a lot of people are using the word intentional. I like the fact that I'm beginning to rub off on you guys because that's the tagline for talk mental health. Be intentional about your mental health. Nothing is going to happen for you easily. You just have to be intentional about it. You have to take proactive measures. You can't just fold your hands and expect everything to work for you. You have to be intentional, basically. Just the word. Be intentional, be proactive. So yes, self-care, take care of the three part of you. Be intentional about it. Um, taking care of yourself unapologetically, meaning that you, in quotes, don't, not really, you don't care. You don't care about what people say or think because it is you, it is your body. You are the one carrying the body and you know where the pain hits you most. So you know how you feel your pain. You know when you're tired, you know when you're exhausted and you're not really bothered about what people will say. You're taking care of yourself unapologetically. So if you're just joining my life, thank you. Thank you for joining. Make sure you ask your questions in the question box by the right hand side, by your right hand side. Thank you. Um, so yes, nurturing yourself, taking care of yourself, being kind and compassionate to yourself are not selfish acts. Nurturing yourself, taking care of yourself, being kind and compassionate to yourself are not selfish acts. The relationship you have with yourself will affect others because you can only give what you have. The relationship you have with yourself will affect others because you can only give what you have. What that means is that if you don't take care of yourself, you're not likely to be able to take care of anyone the right way. So sometimes people wonder if taking care of themselves mean that they are being selfish or trying to say, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, and I'm trying to be careful, or you feel guilty because you are taking care of yourself. The truth is that this caring for yourself is not selfish. You're not being selfish. If you choose to not answer that phone call because you're tired and exhausted, you are not being selfish. If you choose to say no to that person that keeps asking for money from you. You are not being selfish because you don't have it. The truth is, whatever it is you wanna give out to someone else, 
anytime you give something out for instance i have this pen i hope you're all following me so if you if this is making sense to you please just be dropping comments tell me that it's making sense so good it's mind-blowing it's fantastic anytime i drop a quote and you feel excited about it let me know okay just drop it there to say wow fantastic i got it i caught that i got that all right so i was like i was saying this pen if I give it to you, would I still have it? Tell me, would I have this pen once I give it out to, for instance, T. Kelly has said it's making sense. Thank you. Would I have this pen when I give it out to T. Kelly? No. So anytime you give out something to someone, you don't have it anymore. So whatever it is you're going to give to anyone, whether it is your time, your resources, your knowledge, your presence, just know it's going to be at the expense of something. It's going to be at the expense of something. And if you choose to take care of yourself, if you choose to keep your energy, if you choose to protect your mental health, you are not being selfish because you're preserving your existence. You're preserving yourself. All right. And now we're talking about self-care practices and busy. We are so busy. It's a busy world, isn't it? It's a busy world. I mean, that song that says adulthood has come. No, it's true now. It's very true. It's correct. Because I remember when I was younger, I wanted to grow up so quickly thinking adulthood would give me freedom and make me, you know, I just want to be away out of the house. I want to be by myself. But what they did not let me know, what those people that were adults didn't tell us that with adulthood comes responsibility. And the more responsibility you get, the more tired and overwhelmed you could be, right? So yes, we are very busy. The world is so busy. Even it, it seems like the world is even busier nowadays as compared to when we were growing up because of the um, of social media. A lot of people get distracted by social media. We feel tired. We feel we we we, we spend a lot of time on social media. We waste a lot of time scrolling through social media so yes it's a busy world and because of the economic crisis right we have to make a lot make uh, ends meet by trying to you know, hustle um try to do more than one job and try to um you know have um, multiple streams of income so i don't know if this is making sense so what my point or the point i'm trying to make is that everybody is busy so if you are busy, tell me. If you are not busy, just say, ah, I'm not busy. But if you, are, if you know that you're one of those people that are very busy, just say, yes, life is busy. I am busy. I am busy. Let me know in the comment section if this is making sense to you. All right? So, yes, it is a busy world. It is life has become really busy because we have to hustle and we have to take care of ourselves, take care of our children. Some of us take care of our parents, take care of our take care of our Extended families. <laughs> hmm. Let's not even talk. How many of us are firstborns here? If you're a firstborn, just say, I'm a, I'm a firstborn, I'm a firstborn. <laughs> if you are the firstborn of your family, <laughs> you know, the responsibility, a lot of responsibility would lie on any, anyone that is the firstborn of a family because you want to ensure that everybody is fine. You want to take care of your parents. You want to take care of cousins and you know extended family and all of that so the point i'm trying to make is we are super busy tickly <laughs> tickly says i'm a firstborn married to a firstborn i can't imagine i can't imagine so that's like double responsibility from both hands so you see that those are the things those are those these are things that usually uh, would stress us and the way people expect you to do so many things for them the expectations they have of you if you are not careful you are going to wear yourself up you're going to get yourself exhausted and overwhelmed and that's why self-care practices for busy lives we need to be intentional about it huh? remember that it is your responsibility it is another quote of mine it is your responsibility to take care of yourself prioritize activities that bring you joy and peace never leave that to chance it is your responsibility prioritize activities that bring you joy and peace never leave leave that to chance i'll tell a story of someone um i think she's she was in a 
40s late 40s before she passed on so she was this kind of person that wanted to um, um she was married and had kids and would ensure that everybody was fine took care of her husband her children took care of her in-law i think her in-law mother-in-law was sick so she would, was the one that was taking care of the sick mother-in-law so she missed out on a lot of hangouts with her friends parties you know going out with the kids and a lot of things so sometimes when they go on spa days she couldn't make it because there was one activity or the other that she needed to do and she felt like she needed to do that even when she asked for help nobody was really there to help her because i suppose they they had seen or they had known that she was able to juggle all those responsibilities right unfortunately or sadly she passed on and um she when when in time she when she was alive she would tell her friends that mm, i i can't i couldn't make this because my husband cannot do this without me i couldn't make that there was no other person that would um take care of my mother-in-law i couldn't do this because my daughter needed me somewhere you know so she was always gave, making those excuses but when she passed on guess what her husband hired a cook hired a nanny her husband continued his life um he went on to continue to play golf, continue to do things. He, he did not even start doing those things that she was doing. Like there were replacements for her. Within a month, everything started off like, <laughs> I mean, people did not, I, I wouldn't say they did not miss her, but there was replacements for her. Not that the man got married, but he hired people. There were people that was, people that was able to take care of the, the sick mother-in-law, the cook, the nanny, the cleaner, her husband got those people to do it. My point is that whenever you think that you are, nobody is, um, what's that word? Nobody is, is I have forgotten that English word. Or, I have forgotten. <laughs> Anyways, so the point is that don't ever think that you are irreplaceable. Nobody is irreplaceable. So don't, you don't, don't think that you are the almighty problem fixer that you have to be there for everyone you have to ensure that the family is in is stabilized is well balanced and all that just remember that you can be replaced you can be replaced always remind yourself may we not be gone when the future that we are working out for comes may we not be found wanting that's it. That's a prayer. May we not be found wanting when the future we work so hard for now eventually comes, you know? And that the reason why I'm saying that prayer is because I know that we do a lot of work. We are trying to hustle, but we are neglecting ourselves. We are not paying attention to our bodies and our minds. And it's telling on us. And that's why a lot of people are coming down with cancers early, earlier than it used to be. People have got mental health problems earlier than it they used to. You know, a lot of things are happening now. May we not, you know, be found wanting when that future that you are working so hard for now, may we not be found wanting when that future comes. And that's the only way. You see, particularly I said something, I won't say it again, but I, I, I you know, within a week, you will be replaced. May we not be. So we need to start prioritizing ourselves and start doing things the right way if we want to live long and enjoy the fruits of the labor of our hands. My, my, my people, my sisters, my brothers, whoever is watching this replay, I am begging and I am pleading. Yes, I am a psychiatrist and I am a therapist and I see a lot, especially in the mental, mental health problems is just increasing. People are breaking down mentally. Some are not even aware that they are. And the truth is recovery from mental health problem is usually very prolonged. Sometimes recovery is not possible. You know, complete recovery is not possible. Usually when people break down mentally, there's always this part of their life, perhaps 10%, 15%, depending on the mental health problem, that would be lost the quality of life and all so it takes years for them to recover and on and on like that my point is that the only thing we could do for ourselves is to 
engage in activities that would protect our mental health. Yes, the economy is bad. Yes, the exchange rate is crazy. Yes, we don't have all the things we have, but you don't want to even have mental health problems to all of this list. You don't want to, because when the problem comes, to manage it is expensive. Is I wouldn't say difficult, but it is expensive. And recovery takes a while. So you want to do all you can to protect your mental health. Don't lose your mind over things you can't control. Take care of yourself. Learn to let go of things when you know that they are not within your control. Just let them go. All right? So we're talking about self-care practices for busy lives. And the truth is that lack of self-care would affect your physical and mental health. It will affect your, even your spiritual health because it is a body that is strong enough that can pray to God, right? If your body is not strong enough, you're likely to feel tired and exhausted and may not be able to even communicate. Hmm? So, lack of self-care, number one thing that lack of self-care does to you is that it increases your stress level. Uh, so, the truth is that when I was in Nigeria, now I live in the UK, when I was in Nigeria and I was working before I started residency training in psychiatry, I remember when I was working as a medical officer, the number of times that I had people coming for malaria and typhoid um, symptoms, or they would claim they have malaria and typhoid, it was so high. Um, you know, number of patients that I saw that had malaria, I mean, in quotes, had malaria and typhoid, because that's what they would tell you they have. I have malaria, I have typhoid. And the truth is that the body and the mind are related, they're interconnected. Sometimes some of the psychological stress you're going through might present as physical symptoms. You, you don't have malaria, you don't have typhoid. You are likely to have, you're psychologically stressed and it's, it's telling on your body. You're having pains, you're having headaches, tension headaches, back aches, body pains, fatigue. All these are signs of stress, increased level of stress. And stress is not good for you. Yes, there's a little bit of part of stress that could be good. You know, when you're a bit stressed and you, it, it motivates you to want to do something, right? But when you're exposed to chronic stress and you yourself, you're stressing yourself. Because sometimes we stress ourselves by overthinking, worrying, hoping that things will be better. Thinking on, you know, worrying on things that we cannot control. So when you do that, your stress level just goes up. And once your stress level goes up, you know what happens? Cortisol level increases. You know, cortisol level is not meant to increase. Cortisol increases in level of cortisol is high in people with depression, in cancer, in a lot of physical health problem. So stress, what that means is that stress could lead to depression, right? So anxiety, depression, those are, those are disorders where you have high level of cortisol. So when your stress level increases, cortisol increases. And that will lead to inflammation, right? Because your body will try to fight back. <clears throat> your body will try to fight back because it believes something is happening. That's why cortisol is high. So it's trying to fight back. So there's inflammation, inflammatory responses. And these inflammatory responses, they have been linked to a lot of cancer cases. You know, you wonder why a, 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 young, a young adult of 30, 35 is coming down with breast cancer, some colon cancer. I mean, you're, you'll be wondering why. Because, I, you know, one would think cancer used to happen, right? Cancer used to happen in older people. But now, because of how we are living our life, our lifestyles and all that, the stress level, cancer is beginning to occur in, 30, in the early 30s up to 40s. And people are dying early from cancers. It's because of stress. If you change your lifestyle, if you inculcate self-care practices into your health, if you incorporate rather, if you incorporate self-care activities into your everyday life, you will start to notice improvement. You will start to see changes in your sleep pattern, in the way you feel about yourself. Your, the use of painkillers would reduce. You feel fresh. You feel energetic. It is important to pay attention to your body. 
So yes, like I said, lack of self-care would cause increase in stress level. And that would lead to inflammation, would cause mood swings, could lead to depression, and could lead to anxiety as well. So let me know if this is making sense to you. If this, you're following me, if this is making sense to you, could you please drop? If you're just joining, we've said a lot, um, make sure you watch the replay. And if you have any questions, put it in the box by the right hand side so that I can answer the questions once we're done. All right, we're halfway gone. Um, yeah, so if this is making sense, let me know. And if you have questions, drop your questions so the second point i'm going to make today is that lack of self-care will lead to decreased productivity yes you might think you're trying to multitask and doing a lot of things you're trying to make money you're jumping from one job to the other but the truth is that you can never be as productive as you would be if you're well rested you know what? The brain can only function effectively for a maximum of four hours in a day. Let me say that again. Your brain can function effectively for a maximum of four hours <clears throat> in 24 hours. So, whether you like, stay and work on your, on your, on your laptop study for 20 hours the truth is that you've only used your brain for four hours out of those 24 hours <laughs> you know the 20 hours you've stayed on that laptop watching or looking at that laptop or trying to figure out things or sort sorting stuff out the truth is that's how the brain works that's that's it you have to learn to use your brain right know when, what time works best for you know the time that your energy level is so high that you can then do the most important tasks that you've got at that time of the day you know you're very active and then once you get that done the other things you can then try to sort it out you don't really need your mental energy to do that but some of us what we do is press our phones we'll press our phone on those times that you are supposed those hours of the day when your brain is it's supposed to be very functional. That is where you keep scrolling on social media. It's not going to help. And then you wonder why you're exhausted, you're tired, you're always not productive. I mean, these are things that you need to take note of and start making changes if you want to incorporate self-care into your very busy life. All right? So lack of self-care would lead to decreased productivity. Um, and when you're not productive, you're likely not to... Uh, function well so your memory might be affected you start to forget things you just I have a lot of videos on um, cognitive function and courses on brain fog how to improve brain fog on my youtube channel and also on my IG page so if you are not fo following me please click the follow button follow me right away excuse me if you're not so if you've not subscribed to my channel just go to YouTube Go and subscribe. Dr. Adiola Adeyemi. That's my name. Dr. Adiola Adeyemi. Just go and subscribe. And watch. If you sit down and binge watch my, my YouTube videos, honestly, you, you, your mental health will not remain the same again. Because I have a lot of premium content on mental health on that page, on that YouTube channel. So go and do justice to all of those content. Alright. When you are not productive, lack of self-care leads to decrease productivity when you're not productive you will feel less confident in yourself and when you're less confident in yourself you're gonna have poor self-esteem what you try to do is you want people to validate you so i need people to tell me i'm i'm doing well and you try to continue to please people <laughs> that will even add to the stress you're going through because you don't feel good about yourself already just because you're not productive, but you have forgotten that it's because your stress level has increased. You've not been able to manage your time well. You've not been taking care of yourself. That's why your stress level is high. So because of that, there's decreased productivity, there's decreased self-confidence, self, 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 self-esteem is low. You feel worthless, hopeless. And before you know it, mental health problems will start to cripple in. 
um you know your depression can can come come in anxiety can come in and then you start to feel like even when you have setbacks you are not empowered enough to face those challenges because you're you're not prepared for it so you have decreased resilience your ability to bounce back from challenges because the truth is we are in as long as we are in this life there would always be challenges right so there will be challenges <laughs> whether you like it or not but you have to be able to bounce back from those challenges you have to have the skills and one of the skills you need to be able to bounce back from setbacks is self-care one of the skills you need to bounce back from setback is self-care you need it you need to be able to take care of yourself you need to be, feel good about yourself even when things are not working the way you want it you know that it is not about you it is about the situation you are kind and compassionate to yourself you give yourself ample grace you are not being too hard on yourself that is what i'm talking about that is what self-care practices is all about self-care is not limited to taking care of your face looking good buying clothes going to the spa you know doing those things that we all think is self-care self-care is internal it's taking care of your emotional needs you know knowing when to say no knowing when your capacity is full knowing how to tell people that you could not you're not available for something knowing when to sleep you know take ensuring that you are sleeping well you're eating right you're exercising because you know movement is therapy you're drinking enough water these are self-care practices and that's what keeps the spirit the soul and the body together you need to know how to take care of this three part of you as a busy person if you're a mom career mom if you're an entrepreneur if you're a professional and you want to excel in life you have to learn to take care of yourself prioritize self-care all right thank you for joining so now i'm going to share with you seven tips that would help you to learn i know a lot of people are struggling with self-care but the truth is that if you don't have a copy of my book you deserve bliss I don't even have a copy here. I should have brought a, a copy around. Anyways, You Deserve Bliss is the book to buy so that you can learn how to take care of yourself, um, you know, and be good to yourself. It is available on Amazon. It is available on our website. If you need a copy, send me a DM. I'll let you know how to get it. I'll send you the link to buy. All right, so You Deserve Bliss is a self-care guide for everyday fulfillment. So it's a book that will teach you practical skills on how to prioritize self-care. It also has some pages in it for you to journal. Um, it's a very colorful book. So you, it's easy to read, you will like it, you will enjoy it. You can pick on it. For me, I go to the book, it's more like my Bible, my mental health Bible. So I just read through it. Anytime I'm struggling with one thing or the other, I just go through it and read it, okay. This is it, then, then I get myself pumped up mentally. So yes, it's a book that you need to read regularly and get to know how to take care of yourself. It's important. So yes, let me know if you're still with me. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for being with me thus far, but I need to know if you're still with me. Let me know if you're still with me. I need to drop the seven points quickly before we end this live. And then I think I have questions. Um, yeah. Thank you, Giland. All right, so seven tips on how to prioritize self-care. I'll make it quick. If you have questions, just put it in the box. Let Put your questions in the box. Number one, set your priorities right. How to prioritize self-care. Number one, set, set your priorities right. Set your priorities right. What is the most important thing to you? When you wake up in the morning, what is that one thing that is important most important to you set your priorities right right set your priorities right some of us will wake up and what we do is check our phones some of us will wake up and we get distracted about you know you have to be organized you have to know what is important for the day get it done i've told you four hours of your day is what your brain could do and you know so you want to maximize it you want to ensure that you maximize that four hours to do the most important thing, the most important and the urgent things in your life. That's when you want to do it. 
So you know, but you need to know that particular time of the day when you are most active and make sure that whatever you do during that time is the, those things that are important to you. Set your priorities right. Because if you're not doing that, you're going to get tired and overwhelmed. You can't attend to everyone. You can't do everything at the same time. Right? So thank you, Gilan, for putting that up. Yeah. Set your priorities right. Number two, delegate. Delegate. So the number two is delegate. The truth is, you cannot do it all. You have to learn to give people chance to help you. You know? Don't be a perfectionist. Don't try to say... Um, Nobody knows it better than me. Nobody can do it better than me. I have to be there. I have to do it by myself. You're going to get yourself tired and exhausted. You're going to start looking older than your age. If you don't learn to delegate, you have to start teaching your kids how to do house chores. Excuse me. Let them help you. Let them do the thing. Yes, it's going to be, um, it's not going to be as quick as you would want it to be. But the truth is that you can't just do everything for them. How, number one, how would they learn? Number two, you're going to get yourself exhausted. So let them do it the way they can, so they can learn it, how to do it. And before you know it, gradually, they pick on how to do these things. And they ease you off the stress of doing these things. Delegate, outsource things. You might need to, if you, if you have to get cleaner, get a cleaner that will help you. Get a cook. You can, you can buy food in bulk. Whatever it is, just delegate. Ask, I mean, delegate. Delhi, I remember when I was when I had my first child, I would think nobody knew things better than myself. So just to take care of her, I thought that nobody could do it better than me. And I was stressed. I was overwhelmed. There was a day I heard her cry from my sleep and I jumped off and I hit my my I think my leg or something because I, I came out of my sleep trying to um, attend to her because she was crying and there were people in the house I shouldn't have but then because of my perfectionist traits that the ones I had then because I, I had to start letting go of this perfectionist traits traits so that and then I, I tried to embrace uh, a lot of grace and try to accommodate people so that they are able to help delegate and all that to be able to ease myself off the stress so that's what I did the truth is that you need to delegate. If you, if not, you get yourself exhausted. Second point, delegate. So, are you following me, Gilland? Are you still there? Just write, if you can help me write out, to prioritize, prioritize self-care, set your priorities, write is number one. Number two is delegate. Number three, establish boundaries. Establish boundaries. Boundaries. LV boundaries. So, boundaries are like walls that you have around the city to protect the city. So boundaries will protect you from others, right? So it could be personal boundaries, it could be relationship boundaries, it could be time boundaries, a lot of boundaries. But the most important thing you should know about boundaries is that you're not trying to cut out people from your life. You're only trying to protect yourself and others as well. Because at the end of the day, you can only give your best self when you are your best self. Let me say that again. You can only give your best self when you're your best self. All right? So if you are not feeling good in yourself, you're likely not to give your best self. You might likely feel, there might be, you might start feeling um, bitter, anger, you know, resentful towards people. Right? Because you've, oh, you've, given enough i mean you've given too much than you can offer that you have the capacity to give so it's important for you to establish boundaries to protect yourself right it's important and the truth is that yes <clears throat> once you establish boundaries you have to also set consequences <laughs> set consequences if your boundaries are overstepped or people don't do the things you have said you want them to do for you, you know, respect your boundaries. You have to set consequences. Not that you're trying to punish anyone, but you have to learn to um, reinforce that boundary, those boundaries. And that's how people can learn. If you don't show them assertively that you are being serious about your boundaries, they will take it for granted. Okay? They will take it for granted. And the worst thing they will make you feel is the feeling of guilt. So they can manipulate you emotionally blackmail you to making you feel like you're not being nice to them 
But the truth is that you're trying to protect yourself because you cannot give what you don't have. That's just it. So don't feel guilty. Even if you feel guilty, it's okay sometimes because you're still learning to establish boundaries. At some point, you get to understand that um, yes, these are boundaries and it's myself and those guilt feelings or the negative feelings will get better. Okay, so at, at, the, at the beginning, when you start to establish boundaries, you might feel guilty and you feel bad, but that's fine. Okay, so when establishing boundaries, it is important for you to set consequences for people that do not respect your boundaries. Get a copy of my book, You Deserve Bliss. If you want to learn how to set boundaries, I explained in details what to do to set boundaries and to stick to those boundaries or let people stick to those boundaries. Number four, organize your tasks. Organize your tasks. It's important to know, like I said, the brain, four hours a day. You need to know when that, what that, when that time is and make sure that you do the most important activities of your most important activities to you that day within that time all right so organize your task make sure that you're managing your time you could use a lot of tools that are available that could be helpful i love to use calendar i use my my notepad to write my to-do list for the day and i also put time so it helps me keep track of what i'm doing <coughs> so make sure you organize your tasks all right it also help re reduce it also help reduce um, anxiety. So if you're that kind of person that gets easily overwhelmed, you can start from smaller tasks, things that you think it's easier for you to do. And then you break the bigger tasks into smaller tasks so that you can then pick them bit by bit. And as you go, give yourself grace, do breathing exercises, um, celebrate your achievements so that you don't feel like you've not done enough. All right. Make sure that you learn to manage your time effectively and organize your tasks, right? Number four. Number five, schedule me time. How to prioritize self-care? Schedule me time. How many of us on this line do have me times? So please tell me, yes, I do. Yes, I do. How many of us, or let me just say, no, let me rephrase the question. How often... That's the question. How often do you have me times? How often? Is it daily? Is it once a month? Is it once in six months? Just put in the comments. I want to know. I want to see something. How often do you schedule me time? How often? So if you have never done, just say never. Write never. But if you've scheduled me time, just put in the comments. Yes, I do. Sometimes. Um, once a year. Once, a, once in six months. Once once a day, <laughs> once a week, that's good. T. Kelly says once a week, that's good. It, I, I mean, I think once a week is not bad. You could increase it to twice, um, and then gradually you can make it three times. So yes, I need more and more and more people to answer the question. How often do you schedule me time? So T. Kelly has said once a week, um, yeah, I know it's difficult, especially if you're busy and you may not um, get that opportunity to set or schedule me times, but it's important for you <clears throat> to incorporate me times into your daily activities and I will teach you how to do it. So me time doesn't have to be four or five hours. You could have 10 minutes of me time, 20 minutes of me time. What is important is what do you do with your me time? Some of us, once we have the time, what we do is we scroll on our phone. We don't even know we are doing it. It's a habit that we need to work on and stop doing. So you need to be specific on what you want to do during your me time. Perhaps write it down. So I've got 10 minutes to spend with myself. Perhaps the kids are already sleeping and before bedtime, I have just 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. You have to ensure that you do what brings you joy, what makes you feel happy not just scrolling your phone something outside scrolling your phone right to do plan your me time decide what you want to do do i want to listen to music do i want to you know, listen to an audio book do i want to read a book do i want to watch a movie whatever it is that would bring you joy 30 minutes of me time a day incorporate it into your everyday activity it is important because 
if you delay that sale much later when you're uh when you have the time three months six months when you go on holiday you you will not recover from that exhaustion or the the stress that you've gone through over the over the month so and that could lead to post holiday blues like i posted recently when i traveled to paris the truth is you will get anxious depressed mood swings because you had gone on holiday on vacation for just maybe a week and you're back to the stressful the stressful condition you need to learn to manage your daily stress and how to do so is to schedule me time in your everyday activity 20 to 30 minutes plan it what do i want to do today i'm just going to listen to music today i'll just stay have a warm shower whatever brings you joy not just scrolling your phone all right so that's number five point number five number six how to prioritize self-care engage in healthy habits engage in healthy habits physical exercise eating healthy foods not just eating junks drinking enough water you know making sure that you're moving your body you don't have to go to the gym like people do you just need to move your body so these are healthy habits excuse me knowing that all of this would eventually enhance your mental wealth and yes it's, it's your physical health you're trying to work on because it's your body you're working on what you're eating you're exercising you're drinking water it's going to help your your muscles your bones your blood vessels and all that but then it's going to also improve your mental well-being so you have to start engaging in healthy habits important right let's not forget that sugary foods um processed foods and all that they've been linked to a lot of physical health problems like cancer you know pains arthritis heart disease and also mental health problems like depression anxiety even schizophrenia so we have to be careful what we eat be careful what you eat be careful what you eat be careful what you eat sugar is not good for you processed foods not good for you avoid junks run away from junks right be careful what you eat eat right feel right eat right feel right right okay the last but not the least ask for help ask for help ask for help how to prioritize self-care ask for help we need to know when to ask for help we need to know how to ask for help some of us feel like oh Asking for help is a sign of weakness. No, you are actually showing that you're vulnerable. And because you're vulnerable, you're showing your vulnerability. It shows that you're authentic. You're human. I'm just me. I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfectionist. So yes, I need help. I need you to help me. Ask for help. Let us normalize asking for help. You cannot do it all. You cannot know it all. No matter how intelligent you think you are, there are billions of people that are better than you. So you need to start protecting yourself and be um, unapologetic about taking care of yourself, right? Ask for help. Don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to tell people, oh, I don't think I understand this. Or I don't think I have the capacity to take all these tasks or you know do this i may not be able to deliver this today can i deliver in a week's time i i think i posted um um how to set boundaries in the workplace early this morning if you are if you're not following me follow me to see you can just check my page you see it i, I shared it like seven points on how to um establish boundaries in the workplace it's important to know ask for help i, I don't know how to put me through Tell them, I cannot do this. I may not be able to get this done. I feel overwhelmed. I feel tired. I feel exhausted. You know, take your breaks. <laughs> take your breaks. Take your sick off. Take your sick leave. If you feel like you're tired and exhausted and you need to rest, take your sick leave. All right? So, yes, I hope with these seven points of mine, 
And after almost an hour, I've been able to convince and not confuse you that self-care practices is possible, even if you are very busy. Huh? All I want is for you to be intentional about your mental health. And that brings me to the end of my live session. Thank you for joining. If you have questions, please put your question in my comments. I don't think anyone puts question on the other side. I've been Bola I said intentional self-awareness. That was not a question. Um, so Gilan, the seventh point is, um, thank you so much for that. Ask for help. Ask for help. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Ask for help. So number seven is ask for help. How to prioritize self-care, set your priorities right, delegate, establish boundaries, organize your tasks, schedule me time, engage in um, healthy habits, and then ask for help. Ask for help. Ask for help. So do you have any questions? Hi, Ari Dudu. Thank you for joining. Do you have any questions? For Thank you so much, T. Curly. Um, and everyone that has been engaging, thank you very much. Giland and um, um, what else? I'm coming. Wang Gwen and one other person. Um, yeah, Jum Jumo Bikevi. Thank you so much. This is helpful that you typed my comments and my, my points rather. It's really helpful to know that people are listening and following. Thank you so much. So if you have any questions, let me know. If not, we have four minutes to the end and we're going to round this up. Let me know if this has made you, uh, made a difference in your life. Like this one hour of me and you <laughs> being together. If it has helped you, drop it. Let me know. And please, please, please. I'm going to put this on my feed. I need you to go. Once I put it on my feed, T. Kelly, uh, Wangoin, uh, everybody that has been here, Gilland, if this has really helped you, whatever it is you took out of this live session, could you please drop it in the comments? Let people know so that they can be encouraged to watch the replay of this video. All right. Thank you so much. Till I see you next time, I am Dr. Adiola Adeyemi. And I want you to be intentional about your mental health. So bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Jumoke Bibi. Bye to Kelly. Bye. <laughs> yep.